All right, everybody, welcome back to Beans No Ball. Week 13 recap is finally here. Hope everyone had a good Thanksgiving. Let's get started right away. I mean, the way it's going to line up, obviously, Cowboys have the second game. So I'll get it started with the first of the Thanksgiving games, the Bears and the Lions. Definitely, I can't see the Lions had a good Thanksgiving. At least the way it started, we looked really good. Obviously, we expected a blowout the way it started. Was it like 21? Well, they had 21 quick points at this point of the game. Then, obviously, the Jameer Gibbs fumbles. The Bears' defense, you know, really did. You know, they locked it back in. They really made it look like this was going to be a good, you know, started making this a good game. Caleb Williams definitely played one of his better games uh, of the season, which, you know, we can definitely say he's started looking, you know, to that caliber that we expected at least for his rookie year. But obviously it all came down to the end that really idiotic play that sure, you know, ended up getting Matt Eberflus fired, which you no know, wasn't all because of that, but it definitely was the straw that broke the camel's back. Uh, Eberflus is gone. We didn't obviously go in, into it. Uh, had our own situation that we couldn't make that whole video. But back to the game, just regardless of everything, I mean, not the best game for Jared Goff, we could say. I mean, the run game really was what carried this. And, of course, that next man up defense, which uh, Malcolm Rodriguez, a huge anchor at the linebacking position, down with an ACL tear. Just adding on, obviously, we already have Hutchinson that's out for the year. So just that next man up mentality that we've seen for this Lions defense, really, uh, really getting signed. We're going to see how much that can keep going forward. But, I mean, in large part, just a, a a great win i mean ugly win sure but you know got a little bit of luck and the lions ended up pulling their first thanksgiving game in how long has it been christian it's been at least it's been a, long it's been a, a while but we, we yeah. finally get to see the lions pull one out on thanksgiving yeah at least for the bear side iberflus is finally gone let's see if still hope within the whole organization can finally um you know bring him back to life but obviously ryan pace is still you know their gm so we're just going to have to wait and see to see what's going to go on with the Bears' future. And now moving in with my game with the Giants and the Cowboys. And let's just say it was another defensive showdown for my Cowboys team. Finally, this defense is finally starting to pick it up here. We're 5-7. and seven. You know, the road to playoffs, it's kind of slim. It's very, very slim down now. You know, that the Bucks are, you know, still holding that spot there. The Rams are doing a little bit better. So, you know, the position for us, we're, I think, we're last in the hunt right now as of right now. So, it's going to be... To be a lot to handle there, but you know, coming into this game, you know, Drew Lock was gonna get the start here. So, you know, that defense was gonna have to get active against him. Outside of that one huge rush TD he had in the first quarter, outside of that, the defense was just was just lights. I mean, the Marvin Overshown demo. I mean, I've had my excuse me. I've had so much hope for him coming into this season. You know, after you know, he ended preseason with an ACL last year, didn't get to play. Now this year, he's really showing out. He's being one of the top leaders on that Cowboys defense. You know, him getting a pick six from his own spot on the ball is really nice to see there. Him being everywhere against the ball. Also nice to see Marco Parsons is back on that lineup. Really makes a huge difference there. And then on the uh, the cornerbacks end there, you know, Josh Butler, he was stepping it up, ACL injury, so his year is done there. But it was nice to see Blant still coming back, looking like his old self, and finally picking up to where he left off. But as for the offense, Cooper Rush had a pretty mediocre game 195 yards and a touchdown 20 completions for 36 attempts it was all great there but on that offense side it's Rico Dowdle I mean having his career day on this one 22 carries for 112 yards and a touchdown so it's nice to see Rico's finally getting adjusted with this Cowboys offense there and outside of that the receiving end it looked all right outside of CD who had a pretty horrible game with those horrible drops just hoping for the best he's able to bounce back from that yeah obviously not his best, you know, as we can kind of see, you know, wasn't really on the same page with, with Cooper Rush in a lot of those games. But yeah, I mean, obviously, once we finally woke up from the nap we took for this game, get into the nightcap on Thanksgiving, probably, you know, getting wrapping up or starting up our Thanksgiving dinner. I mean, a decent game overall. I mean, this we probably did expect this. We know what happens with the cold weather Dolphins. I mean, it's just it seems it seems like uh, you know what's going to happen once the, the weather dips into into those colder temperatures. Uh, just just a tough start, I uh, gotta be honest. I mean, you know, the Packers, you know, the, the Dolphins defense uh, able to hold on, but uh, Packers special teams getting a great play, get the ball back in the red zone on the, uh, on the uh, muff punt, and eventually, you know, go up 14 points. Really, really start, really great start for the Packers overall, and just the tone continues to be set. Just overall, great all-around game, Jordan Love. Great mistake, free football, no turnovers once again, and just efficiently uh, getting this game done. Josh Jacobs, I mean, you know, obviously had a decent game, not as good as the ground as you would probably expect as of recently, especially in a, in a cold weather game like this, like what we expected that they would have had the upper hand, but great game on the receiving end, still got into the end zone. So 
could see, you know, once he has that success, you still see the Packers having success. And Jaden Reed, another phenomenal game for him getting those two touchdowns early on, of course. And just overall, maintain that pace in the NFC North. It's going to be important for the Packers. And, you know, like I said, they're in third place, but still obviously one of the better teams in the NFC. And as for Miami, already said all the stuff about the cold weather. But the main thing we got to look at this, as much as we expect them to lose this game, it is a big missed opportunity to go to five and seven when you could have been at six and six. It is probably going to end up being a detrimental loss considering their playoff possibilities. Yeah, it looked like the Dolphins, they're really having a good shot to the playoffs there. You know, this loss is really going to solidify them to having a really worse shot into this. But at least for the Packers' sake, you know, third in the division, great record. You know, they still got a long way to go, and it's really good to see for them for Jordan Love finally stepping up. Now moving it on to the, the Black Friday game with the Raiders and the Chiefs. And let's just say, once again, this is a prime example of another, another dark black voodoo magic from this whole Chiefs organization there. I mean, the Raiders, they were really going hard against this Chiefs team. I mean, you look at the Chiefs defense, you know, from the past uh, couple years before we were you know, this Chiefs defense would be the reason why the Chiefs, you know, probably wouldn't go far. And it was just like two years ago. But now the, their defense is kind of be the big ones there. But now that they're having close matches with these, you know, horrible teams like the Raiders, the Panthers, the list continues, right? This game really showed the true side of the offense for this Chiefs team. I mean, Patrick Mahomes, sure, be a Bosco warrior. You could say 360 yard touchdown. He played good. But when you're really looking at the game of this Raiders defense, it really got to the notes of this Chiefs team. They were coming back in the second half. The touchdown to Brock Bowers and Trey Tucker, they really brought the lead there. And it all came down to the final. It really came down to the final drive. And Aiden O'Connell, he did what he could. He had a phenomenal game leading this comeback there. But unfortunately, the refs should have called the false start instead of a legal formation. And because of that, they said, they said uh, excuse me, they said the legal formation and because it was a fumble, a forced turnover, Chiefs got the ball and won the game from the field goal. But with all that being said, Raiders probably shouldn't have been in this position if it wasn't for Daniel Carlson. I mean, he missed three field goals. He went one for four. Probably would have won in the game. It probably would have been a crunch turn for this Chiefs team. But once again, it's just an unfortunate thing to see. Yeah, obviously, you know, luck seems to be on their side, sure. But I don't think we can put yeah. too much of that uh, false star legal formation one. I think... Uh, it's it's leaving my mind right now, but I do remember seeing that it was in the end the right call. I mean, sure, you know, lucky enough for the Chiefs that that was the right call in the end. But yeah. I mean, uh, for, for what it's worth, I mean, don't think we can put on that. Large part, it was just the Raiders shooting themselves in the foot like they usually do. But move it into the Sunday slate. Start off with the Chargers and the Falcons. This one, I mean, obviously, we got most agreements throughout this week. I was pretty close to taking the Falcons. I thought maybe Kirk Cousins could have a nice little bounce back. Obviously, that was not the case. Four interceptions for Kirk. I mean, just ugly showing overall. I mean, just not the greatest offensive game on both sides. I mean, in one part, a struggling offense for the Falcons. And I mean, just on both sides. I and mean, I think I don't want to overreact too much for the Falcons, but it's starting to look like maybe just a little bit more of a favorable version of what we're seeing with the Jets and Aaron Rodgers. I mean, sure, the Falcons have won a couple more games, but the quarterback play has started to look rough. The only difference is Kirk had a nice start. Now it's just starting to look pretty rough on in these last couple games. But Chargers side of the ball, an ugly win, but a win is a win. Lad McConkey stepping up huge in, in large part, I mean, we see struggling struggles overall for this Chargers offense I mean specifically that wide receiver core Quinn and Johnson just falling flat after a decent start to the regular season I mean Lad McConkey really picking it up and one thing we had to say after one bad loss it seems like we forgot about this great Chargers defense they definitely showed up and reminded us how good I mean they were the top defense still one of the top defense in this league for like I already said four interceptions and obviously keeping this Falcons office at bay they still have those great weapons holding them down i mean it's just a huge win for the Chargers, maintaining that believe bit spot in the afc playoff picture just can continue to roll in the surprising season with jim harbaugh yeah without a doubt the Chargers team really exceed my expectations so what i thought of them this season and their defense really showing out really proving over the matters and really taking advantage of that really really horrible performance from kirk cousins uh yesterday and now moving on, and once again, back to the to the AFC North and one of the grudge matches with the Steelers and the Bengals. Now, first half, this, they're in a dogfight once again. I mean, this Bengals, the pick six that they got early on in the game in the first half, it was really showing that, okay, we're going to have ourselves a game there. Maybe the Bengals defense for, you know, for once, they can finally step it up, get the offensive out with Joe Burrow, Jamar Chase, give him some cushion. That wasn't the case there. 
as Russell Wilson, since he started with the Broncos, he's been, you know, having a phenomenal season so far there. Really putting the team on his back, finally getting the connections with the receivers, just like George Pickens. And same thing with Calvin Austin there, but I do believe he's injured, if I am not mistaken. I think I have to review that. I can get fact check on that there. Maybe I misread it there. But as for George Pickens, you know, the connection with him, it's there and it's really good to see. And same with Najee Harris, the run game. He's been a little bit happier since Russell Wilson, 75 yards on a touchdown. So the run game is also a big, big, really big deal for the Steelers team. And now comes second half. This is just all Steelers football. Russell Wilson is really slinging that ball forward. 14 total passing yards, three touchdowns, and then obviously the interception that led to the pick six there. So this was all Steelers football towards the second half. You know, Come garbage time, Bengals, they had the chance to come back, and it looked like it there when they scored the last touchdown there, but unfortunately, really wasn't enough there. So, really nice to see that this Pittsburgh Steelers team, once again, it's another team really exceeded our our expectation, which is we both really did have it on this season. 9-3, still in the AFC North, still a really great battle there. As for the Bengals, just another unfortunate loss there that Joe Burrow, you know, still having a career year, career year for him, but this defense is just not being able to hold up. And this is what ends up happening in this AFC North. I mean, a game that we probably expected to not be this yeah. close. I mean, call it garbage time, but, you know, still getting a nice, close <laughs> AFC North matchup. Not de- not a defensive battle that we probably would have expected. But moving into the Cardinals and the Vikings. Now, this game, the, the, this one was, was definitely one of the games, man. I mean, it's our one disagreement that we got in this weekend. You know, because of just an absolute choke job, you end up taking it. Uh, we'll get into the end. Regardless, it was a great week for the both of us. But, I mean, I don't care what anyone says. I mean, Sam Darnold still not that great of a game. I'm sure. Say what you want about that that fourth quarter. You know, say he redeemed himself by bringing this game back. But, I mean, we still see the fall off of Sam Darnold go, going from those MVP talks to now the way he's playing here. I mean, offensively nothing going in life and that was both teams sure you know it was just a, a field goal fest to start and cardinals did end up pulling away little by little on that marvin touchdown but just a rough showing for the vikings to start it's just that minnesota defense that's really bailing this this team out and you know in life part the only reason they're 10 and 2 to this point say the same thing about aaron jones those two fumbles but sure in somewhat redeeming himself getting that eventual game winning touchdown now the story of this game, I mean, the Cardinals just shooting themselves in the foot time and time again. Kyler Murray selling so hard in the fourth quarter. Those two interceptions, two horrible interceptions, we got to say. But of course, before what ended up happening to lose this game, Cardinals were obviously putting themselves in tough positions, getting themselves into third and longs of pretty much every other series. And sure, we do have to say, you know, large part, the Vikings defense. Uh, I have everything Brian Flores is doing to this team, I mean, they're the big reason why, like I already said, the big reason why this team is 10-2. and two, But the offense is eventually going to catch up to them. And you got to say, this is going to end up blowing up in their face. Probably a wild card exit, as I keep saying. Yeah, they really got lucky with, the, you know, the way the Cardinals shot themselves in the foot. I'm glad I didn't roll with the Cardinals this week. I was very, very close there, too. But, you know. These last five games, this Vikings team, they got, a, they got a lot of things to clean up, like you said, on the offensive side of the ball. And now moving on with the Colts and the Patriots. Now, this was a this was a game that I did not expect to be, you know, at least this close, you know, or at least this close, you know, towards the fourth quarter there. But let's just say the Colts, Anthony Richardson, he may have had a horrible game on the pass game, 109 yards, two touchdowns, two interceptions. But on the ground is where, you know, he was clutching up a beginning of the first downs, clutching when he really needed to, especially on the fourth down conversions that I got in the fourth quarter, leading that game winning drive there. By all means, there. Also, on the help of Jonathan Taylor, 25 carries, 96 yards, obviously, that rush attack was the reason this Colts team, you know, was this close in the game and actually helped them did win the game there, right? And the, for the fourth quarter drive, Anthony Richardson, two for two on fourth down, you know, one to extend the drive. And then one on the touchdown as well, uh, as, well as there to the pass, uh, the pass TD to Alec Pierce. And then they go for two. Anthony Richardson runs it in, 25-24 uh, Colts, Patriots. Now, this is really nice to see about Anthony Richardson. Obviously, he does a lot of wrong talent. This is technically still his rookie year. He's got a lot of development to do. He's got a lot of cleaning up to do. Hopefully, Shane Steichen, he cooks it, you know, for the last five games. to obviously, you know, get him a little bit more custom. And obviously, the offseason, that's for a different story there. As for the Patriots, Jake May, he's still looking good. I wouldn't say too phenomenal yet, but he's looking good so far with what he's working with on that offense there. 238 yards, touchdown interception. It's still him using his legs. Five carries, 59 yards. So, the rush game for the Patriots team is finally starting to pick it up as well. There, they're 3-10 there, but it's nice to see Jake May he's de- uh, excuse me, develop it to the point where, you know, you can still advise your future start for now on. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, 
for the quotes. I mean, you know what we always say, just see if we can end up developing and rich. I mean, hey, yep. there's still a definite shot to make it into the playoffs. Just see how that playoff picture ends up shaking up in the AFC. But mm-hmm. move it into Seahawks and the Jets. And I mean, this one, this one could have helped my Rams so much. But, you know, hey, uh, Seahawks end up pulling this one out. And got to say, uh, one of the main things that I always end up saying, you know, another pretty mediocre showing for Geno Smith and the offense as a whole, especially, you know, getting into that 21 to 6, 21 to 7 hole early on. But the story of the game, obviously, this Mike McDonald defense just keeps on improving, keeps on just amazing, uh, you know, little by little. Obviously, I would always say I expected this. I expected the McDonald defense to to show out and be good, but, you know, probably expected to take a little longer. Large part, I'm definitely the star on this defensive line. Leonard Williams, expect him to be the, the force getting to the quarterback. A pick six, second interception in his career, taking it for six. I mean, obviously, once that interception happened, we kind of knew it was starting to swing the Seattle's way, and we, it kind of looked like they were going to end up pulling it out, and obviously ended up getting that, that late touchdown for Charbonnet, which I wish he could have went to K-9, could have helped me in fantasy. But regardless, I mean, uh, a huge win for Seattle. Get trying to uh, now they actually get a little bit of separation on Arizona after that loss that they just had. And look for the Jets, this loss clinches their ninth consecutive losing season. It's just ugly, man. I mean, obviously, so much that yeah, you could say. I mean, Aaron Rodgers, obviously, he's been a liability, but in this one, it's especially just a uh, really poor play. Really had a chance to probably take this game back with with a, an overthrow to Garrett Wilson, but of course you now. Did, did mess that up himself and I mean not much we can really say just I mean it's 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 gonna be a lot of changes coming to this Jets team going into next season yeah I didn't expect the Jets to you know do anything I gave him the benefit of the doubt and give him you know at least a better record than what it is now at least my take I guess it's semi-correct there but now it is unlikely Aaron Rodgers could be with the Jets following next season so that's just gonna have to wait and see there just a huge disaster for that Jets team and now moving it on with the Titans and the Commanders there and once again look once again the Commanders Jaden Daniels sure he had a bounce back game against this really depleted three and nine Titans team you can see all that the run game with Brad Robertson Jr. and Chris Rodriguez Jr. they really bounced back you know combining for almost 200 yards total but you know they combined for two touchdowns on the running game there the connection with uh Jaden Daniels and Terry McLaurin is really looking nice there finally uh Starts to look on the same page, you know, as from the uh, last rough, last couple of weeks there. And then Zach Ertz, the living fossil, did record a TD as well. So there's at least, you know, some morale boost right then and there. And the defense did show out. Finally, I guess the Titans team. But I, once again, it is this struggling Titans team. I know this season, at least with the Titans, the great I could say this, you know, Titans defense. As much as, you know, you know, I can give credit for this and that, as how, you know, okay they've been playing, you know, that's the only one price I can give to commanders that is really punching the you know, to, to throw to do that Titans defense. But offensive side with the whole Titans team, I mean, Will Levis, once again, he did what he could, you know, come towards garbage time, really wasn't enough there. The commanders, they were just pound, pounding, pounding everything there. I still don't see anything from the commanders, though. I want to see what they're going to do against teams above 500 there. And that's going to prove what they're going to do in the playoffs. Is they're going to be a wild card exit or they're going to make a run there. So Dan Quinn, whatever he's going to do, whatever he's going to do, talk to JD Daniels, get everything adjusted there. This game still wasn't enough at all whatsoever. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think you got to look at it a different way. You got to see, you know, they're getting back on track, uh, keeping yeah. keeping pace in the NFC playoff picture. A get right game. I mean, we, we've seen a lot of these uh, in the past. I think you definitely do give them credit to, you know, you, you beat the teams you're supposed to beat. It's always important to get that. And, you know, a get right game is a get right game. A win is a win. Now, move it into a divisional matchup. I see these are always so important. The Texans and the Jaguars, I mean, this one had all the storylines that, that you could think of going into this one. I mean, just start with the important part. I mean, Aziz Alshir, I mean, a disgusting hit on Trevor Lawrence. I mean, he obviously we saw him seizing up, got carted off, uh, didn't come back into the game. Just obviously definitely expect Alshir to, to receive a multi-game suspension. And obviously prayers go to Trevor Lawrence. Hopefully he can actually end up getting back uh, in before the season ends. I mean, it's... Uh, obviously going to have a concussion. We'll see. Hopefully he does come back. But getting into the game, I mean, pretty ugly offensively overall. I mean, for the Jaguars, you probably expect that. And especially then when uh, Mac Jones came into the game. But for the Texans, I mean, CJ Stroud, the struggles just continue to pile on. I mean, not really able to involve Nico Collins and Tang Dell. I mean, Tang Dell, especially one catch, really would have expected him to get see some more action in this one. But 
just overall those struggles continue i mean joe mixon was the star of this game and you know the big reason that the texans ended up pulling this one out would have expected uh some better showings for this texans defense but at, at the end of the day i mean sure say what you want i mean they didn't have one of their best players who you know because of that dirty hit but would have liked the texans to uh, have a a better showing here especially like what you were saying against a depleted and you know pretty bad jaguars team but look one thing i can say for the jaguars i mean they put up more of a fight than i thought and you know obviously it's nice to see them backing up trevor lawrence you know call, call it what you want you know don't want to see that kind of stuff on the field but you know you got you got to get justice for your quarterback yeah the concern for the texans is just it's going up by the minute now i mean the soft first looks really hitting to cj Stroud, and you know the possibility of the wage being a first round exit i mean that's just the plain off flat truth right there and now moving around on the other side of the conference with the NFC South. And once again, you know, these division matchups, they've been, they've been closer than we've expected. And we, I definitely didn't expect with this one there with the Bucks and the Panthers there. Let's just say it was a really, it was a really nice shootout between Baker and Bryce Young. Bryce Young, once again, finally developing into the quarterback that, you know, we expect, expected him to be last year and this year. But it's really, really good. And, you know, I know how we said that this Bucks defense... We said everything about this Bucks defense. It's slow, but it picks it up. They're inconsistent. That's the broad truth about this Bucks defense there. And this game really showed it there. You know, Baker, he really had to do everything to kind of bounce back there. And in the fourth quarter, I mean, the, the spoiler from Bryce Young's generational comeback win against this Bucks team. I mean, come on, Baker. Like, once again, putting this team on his back on the final drive to set up on field goal, field goal range for Chase McCoffman coming into overtime. And once again, it got spoiled once again with Chubo Hubbard, unfortunately, fumbling to turning all the ball over and setting up the overtime with the Bucks for the Bucks team. They're still in the race for the for the for the for the wild card and that's what I'm saying the Bucks during the right position right there having the lead uh, outside of the other teams that are in the hunt there and then one big one more thing too Bucky Irving 25 carries 152 yards and one touchdown. This is definitely a really good draft steal for this Bucks team and anyone who got him on fantasy I don't know Picasso he got him. I know he's happy about that but once again Bucky Irving really being the true thing true leader of not leader but one of the big impacts of this box office oh and i said one thing but mike evans he needs 479 more yards to complete his streak of a thousand total of a thousand receiving yards each season there jerry wright has the record for 11 he could tie it up he's got five more games look at the schedule really rooting for mike evans to keep the streak going absolutely it is doable five games mm -hmm. under 500 yards could definitely see him doing it and then you know like you say about yeah. the playoff position you know we see the falcons slipping up don't be surprised if the Buccaneers end up uh, taking this division. But mm -hmm. move it into my Rams, taking on another team from this division, the New Orleans Saints. And I mean, look, uh, be honest, first half, it was awful. I mean, obviously, being shut out offensively in the first half for the first time since uh, the infamous Super Bowl 53, obviously, can say enough about that game. But yeah, I mean, just pr pretty ugly offensive showing. Gotta obviously at least, you know, uh, give credit where credit's due to the defense for, for the Rams. I mean, keeping the Saints to three, six points. Probably could have been three if we um, played a little hard uh, in that last drive. But regardless, six, on the six nothing, you probably expected this one to be ugly from, from the start. And we see the position that these two teams were in. But second half, three touchdowns on four possessions. I mean, doesn't really get much better than that for the Rams. And huge shot that i got to give to kyron williams man after a pretty forgettable showing against the eagles with those two fumbles over 100 yards on 15 carries getting back into the end zone and no fumbles i mean just a great game for him to puka get back in the end zone demarcus robinson in the end zone despite his whole situation that we can get into at a later time but just a great showing for the rams as ugly as the first half was the second half does make up for it and defensively to close out this game the defensive rookie of the year front runner jared verse a uh, beautiful strip sack on fourth down in the red zone to really ice this game. And then, of course, Kyron gets that first down to finally ice this game. Just overall a great performance, great second half performance. We could toss that first half out the way, but just overall, you know, really, really good. You know, get to six and six, still maintain the pace in the NFC West. We'll see how that goes. But as for the Saints, I mean, offensively, you know, they look fine until that Taysom Hill injury, that, which, of course, he will be out for the season. You know, prayers to him. It is rough. Obviously, he was one of their main offensive gadgets. But just in general for the Saints team, you know, playing a lot better for Darren Rizzi than they ever looked with Dennis Allen. I mean, would not be surprised if they end up retaining him after this season. 
Yeah, so for the second year in a row, your Rams, they're making a comeback once again. And, you know, forgot to mention, you know, the Rams, they did pick up Emmanuel Forbes Jr. about just about two hours ago. So let's see if, you know, you know, from how he was with the Commanders, we know how to see if we see how he was. Let's see if he has a, you know, better place there, you know, with Los Angeles. Let's see if he has a really big comeback for his career. And now moving in, we're probably the game, with the game of the week, the Eagles and the Ravens. And we, ex we expected a close game and we did receive one there. But unfortunately, Lamar Jackson and this Ravens team, a lot of struggles going on. We see here, and the really the main fact of this was Justin Tucker. I mean, it's it, I mean, come on, I, is it time to bring in the the wash allegations to Justin Tucker? I, I think we might have to, but two for four field goals, two crucial misses that potentially could have had the Ravens up, and it would, would have been a whole huge tra trajectory change for the Eagles. Maybe it had to have, have them driving for the win there, and that's exactly what happened there. John Harbaugh here to discuss they're going to retain Justin Tucker. You know, that's their guy. They're going to retain him for the rest of the season. Justin Tucker, he's lost them about three games already. I mean, they could be at least a little higher up in the in the AFC because of Justin Tucker and his misses there. But we're just gonna have to wait and see to see how he's gonna recover from that. But outside of that, Lamar Jackson, he had a he had a good game all around there. It's just the last minute mistakes, you know, the under throws and this and that, and not having the correct connections he's been having with the receivers there. All the Mark Andrews. He did have a bounce back, but it really wasn't up because of Philly's offense. And it was all because of Saquon Barkley. 23 carries, 107 yards, and a touchdown there. Like we said, this whole offense, it pretty much runs through Saquon Barkley. Once he gets going, Jen Hurts, it's pretty easy for him. Didn't even have to do much, 118 yards, and a touchdown there. Not going to be a botch on that because of the help of Saquon Barkley there. Same with A.J. Brown. The connection with him and Hurts, it's still good right there for what we really needed to be in our second half. This was all Eagles, really, really all Eagles game with the way that defense has been playing, especially with Quenyon and Cooper Jean really been stepping up as well there. And Jalen Carter, who's really been one of the anchors of this whole D-line there. So this Philly team, it's really looking scary come playoff time. Absolutely. I mean, well, what are they up to now? Eight in a row? Mm -hmm. Yeah, eight, 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 in a row. yeah. eight wins in a row. I mean, obviously looking like a bus sign looking like a beeline to end up facing the lions in that nfc champion so we'll see if probably do end up getting that matchup but head off into the nightcap with the sunday nighter niners bills obviously we probably expected a lot better of a result but i mean in the snow in the elements the niners just couldn't handle it uh plain and simple just uh just uh, honestly just a rough show i mean the the, the snow definitely uh, got got in their way multiple blunders uh you know little, little fumbles getting slip slipping up i mean probably could have attributed it to maybe uh could have worn some better cleats but say what you want regardless they weren't ready for the snow and the bills were josh allen in particular threw for a touchdown ran for a touchdown and caught one of his own passes if you want to call it that the whole play with amari cooper but just an all-around complete game he's looking like far and away the mvp front runner and the bills say what you want about the chiefs the Bills are looking like far and away the best team, the most complete team in the AFC. Really looking, I mean, they're really hitting on all cylinders at the right time. And, you know, so all we could say about the 49ers, I mean, the injuries keep getting to them, obviously. Now, once again, losing Christian McCaffrey. This time, it looks like it will be for the season with that PCL injury. Jordan Mason now, uh, high ankle sprain. He's hitting IR. Just protect Isaac Garendo at all costs at this point. You can see that he still is a viable option. You're going to need to hold on to him. It's just, it is looking bleak little by little for the 49ers. Five and seven, still got a relatively tough part of the schedule. Could see a bounce back game against the Bears next week. See if they can probably um, make good on that part. Yeah, honestly, this 49ers team did not expect them to have such a downfall there. I know the injuries really suck to see. Then your two running backs go down there. But, you know, we're just going to see. But, you know, for the Bills, my take on the Bills and Josh Allen is really, really looking nice there. They're definitely they're really the team to look out for. They're them and the Eagles. Yeah, and now finally closing off with the Monday Nighter. We're actually recording this after the game. You know, had to finish up a couple of schoolwork. Finals weeks coming up there. So, you know, just a little change of scenery right there. But let's get right into it. The Browns and the Broncos. Man, was was this a shootout that we not expect? So far, the Monday Nighters, they have not been disappointing. I like, you know, most of the Thursday Nighters here. But, wow, was it just a really just a shootout between both, both the team? Jameis Winston and Bo Nix. Now, the most obvious Jameis, the most obvious Jameis Winston stand line ever. 497 yards, he had a career day, four touchdowns, three interceptions, two of which pick sixes. I mean, you expect J-Bo to have a game like this, and you expect it like this, the most insane style you can say. Same with Jerry Judy, he had a career game for him. He wanted revenge on the Broncos. To an extent, you can say he did get it without him having another generational game, career game for himself. Nine catches, 235 yards, and a touchdown obviously wasn't enough to secure this win because of the Broncos. 
and Bo Nix. Yes, now we got we talking about a lot of box score warriors here, this and there. He didn't have those two picks there, but when it really mattered the most, him using his legs, him getting the pass game going, Marvin Mims, he's also getting more involved in the pass game as well, there as well. Corlin Sutton, his connection with Nix as well. It's still starting to connect both of these receivers. 105 yards for Mims, 102 yards for Corlin Sutton. So obviously, this is looking really nice here, moving up the Broncos now are 8-5. and five. This connection with the receiving core, Bo Nix, again in the rush game, Jalil McLaughlin also having a game for himself, getting the cushion there. Now, obviously, these two defenses, two pretty good defenses there, obviously didn't show out when it really mattered, you know, between both these two high-powered offenses, you can say at the I moment two there. Two picks just for the Broncos. No, yeah, that's what mattered. I'm saying there. But 32 points for this uh, for this Browns team, that's the thing that's really, you know, come to the first half there. But those two pick sixes really did show out at the most part there. Another Rookie of the Year campaign for Bo Nix. This agenda st finally started to cook up. He's finally cooking himself uh, an agenda for this and there. But we're just going to have to wait and see what's going to go on for the, for the moment there. Yeah, absolutely. And it's like you said, you know, you say what you want, you know, 32 points against a really mediocre Browns offense. But mm -hmm. the when it matters most in the crunch time, you know, it was because of them that they ended. I mean, hey, they outscored the Broncos offense. And I exactly. they outscored Bo Nix yeah. is what I mean. But... Yeah, just a, a great showing overall. You know, keep, keep that keep that pace in the AFC West playoff picture. But that is going to wrap up Week 13 recap. Uh, hit the picks uh, real quick once again, Christian. That slight upper hand that you had, and this was a generational week for us. 15 and one, 14 and two. Really uh, hit it on the nail on this one. And we'll this see. Is my best week ever. Oh uh, yeah, it's your best week, week ever. It's one of my yeah. best, despite uh, get, just staying behind you. But yeah, we'll we'll see if you can. I mean, hey, you're inching your way back bit by bit. See if you can actually catch it up. If I can, um, I'll, I'll give you a couple more as as we go. But that's gonna do it for us here. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you like and subscribe, and be back as Bean Talk comes right back on schedule this week.